<clears throat> hey everybody, James with Love My Pups, my breed of supply. I keep asking you to subscribe, please do that. And do go to uh, my breed of supply, lots of great products, you know, some innovative whelping products to have successful litters, incubators, uh, products to ship semen. And we have a lot of Frenchy stud dogs, and so we've got a lot of people around the whole world who have got some of our genetics in their dogs. All right, so we are going on with the 12-part series, and we've finished Platinum, and now we're going on with Merle. And by the way, I think I'm going to add a bonus 13th one at the bottom, because 13th is good luck, right? Merle's, okay. So, the Merle gene. <clears throat> so, Merle is um, a variation in colors on a coat that produces two colors or more. So, it's different than Brindle, and it's different than Pied. And it's different because you could genetically test for it as well. And it looks different. So how do you describe a moral dog? It tends to be um, kind of blotches of color on a, on a background field. Um, as opposed to pied, pied is always on a white background. And the, the it tends to be fairly bigger blocks of color that are well-defined with def well-defined edges. Versus brindling, which is a striping effect that you see in the dog. So Merle is very different. Um, other things about Merle dogs, they tend to have uh, different colored eyes or maybe one eye with two different colors in the same eye. Um, Merle is a little bit, you've got to be careful with Merle. So the genetics, when you get back a test, your dog will either be little M, little, little M. That is a non-Merle. That's a non-Merle dog, <clears throat> which is most dogs are. Or it'll come back big M, little M, and there's your Merle. You do not want this one. You do not want two copies of Merle. And the reason for that is that these dogs have health issues with blindness and deafness. So for this reason, you don't breed Merles to Merles. There is one last one. It's called MC, cryptic Merle. So you might come back with that. Or you might even come back with a copy of Merle and a copy of cryptic Merle. You might even come back with that. So that's what you're going to see on a report. So now the question is, now what's the good, the bad, and the ugly? All right, so <clears throat> I want to stress again, you do not, do not breed a Merle Carrier, this dog. Do not breed that to this dog. You just don't do that. If you do, you run into a good chance that a quarter of, your, of that litter is going to have some significant problems. So don't do that. Let's just look at that in particular. So what the heck are we talking about here? So we don't want to end up with this double Merle dog. The double Merle dog is a dog that has problems. So if you put a Merle with a Merle, what do you get? So here's our Punnett square. And I need to wipe that down a bit more. Sorry about this. Let me just get another rag here. Get that dry so you can see it. Okay. Punnett Square, Merle, and I, it's not doing very good here. Merle to Merle, what do you get? You get a litter of all Merle dogs. Not a good day. Not a good day. Significant number of these dogs are going to have some real problems. Just don't do it. Okay. So then the other temptation would be to put a moral carrier dog to a moral carrier dog. It's a little M for not moral. Now what do you get? One quarter of the dogs are not moral. One quarter are not moral. <clears throat> One quarter of the dogs are double moral. They, those dogs are in trouble. That's the ones you don't want. Half the litter, half the litter, carry one copy of moral. And it just takes one copy because it's a dominant gene. And those are the dogs that do fine. So, so what's a much better approach to this? So the better approach to this is that you breed a Merrill to a completely not Merrill dog. And you'll see what the results are. You still get great results. 
You just don't end up with the bad, with the dogs that are in trouble. So that's why you always put a moral with a non-moral. So whenever somebody says a moral, you hope that that dog is a moral, one single copy. So you put the moral dog that has one copy to a non-moral dog. What do you get? You get morals and you get non-morals. So you get a half morals and a half non-morals. As opposed to the other example where you put a moral carrier the moral carrier, you ended up with a quarter in trouble, a quarter not moral, and half of them morals. You still got the half morals, you just didn't end up with that quarter double morals that'll get you in trouble. Don't breed a moral to a moral. Okay, so what the hell is a cryptic moral? A cryptic moral is a dog that is moral but doesn't look moral. It has no signs of moral on it. And the funny thing about moral is it can express itself in a number of different ways in terms of the pattern. And I'm going to talk more about that in here in a moment. But let's specifically talk about cryptic moral. <clears throat> I've never produced a cryptic moral. I've never bred a cryptic moral. So I'm kind of talking off the top of my head here just from what I've read about cryptic morals. So, uh, you know, other people might chime in and say this is bad information. I don't think it is, but it could be wrong. All right. So if a dog comes back on a test as that, cryptic moral, what the heck is that? That is a dog that has the moral gene, but it doesn't express itself anywhere. I guess it's like just got a little bit of moral in there. How the heck that can happen, I don't know. But that dog can be bred back to. So that would be a dog that will come back MC, little m. And that dog can be bred to a moral carrier, what we say is a typical moral. Because then what will you get? You'll get this, and you'll get this, and you'll get MCMs, and you'll get <clears throat> MMs. All right, that's what you'll get, okay. So, so these, and let's just, uh, this dog here, here's your double moral, but it's a cryptic moral, and supposedly you only have a 4% problem of having problems when you do this. So this is the danger zone right here. This is, this is a non-moral. This is a moral. This is a, you didn't draw it right. Yeah, this is, a, this is a cryptic moral. And this guy here is a double moral with cryptic. Supposedly, this is not an issue. Only 4% of these dogs run into trouble. So you've got a relatively good chance you don't have a problem. This is a moral. There's a moral. And uh, this is a cryptic moral, so I don't think this shows up. It's going to be a cryptic moral. So I don't think this one shows any moral at all. And this is a non-moral here. So, um, yeah, there you go. Um, never done it. You know... I don't see any big advantage to this because you're only going to end up with one quarter of the dogs who are going to show moral. And if you hadn't had a cryptic moral involved, then half the dogs would end up being moral. So I'm not sure that this is, you know, particularly, you know, useful thing to be doing. But anyway, there it is. Supposedly it's okay. I just don't think that uh, this will show up as a moral and this one will show up as a moral and this one, this one won't show up as a moral, though it's a cryptic moral. So th there it is. All right, let's talk about different shades, different colors that you get in a moral coat, because this is interesting. It's like pied and like brindle. It can express itself in lots of different ways. You know, if you look at the pied gene, you can end up with dogs that are what are called extreme pieds. They have very little color on them. They're almost totally white. And uh, they can run into problems. We talked about that before when we were talking about that back here about pieds. You, so it's not the issue here. What the issue is, is what we'd like to see with murals is really what I call loud coats. Lots and lots and lots of colour. And um, um, if you look at a couple of my videos recently, I produced some dogs there, one of which was a chocolate mural. Golly, most beautiful dog I've ever seen for a mural. Just splashed up like crazy. So there is variations on mural. Because you can get a pied mural. 
Pied Merrill may, will only show the Merrill where the colour is and the rest of the background will be white. They're pretty, especially if they've got big areas of Merrill on them. If they've just got a little bit of Merrill on them, I don't think they're as pretty. You can end up with a, um, um, a brindle Merrill. Brindle Merrills, typically you don't see the brindling. It looks more like a Merrill dog. Uh, the, the two that I really like are Harlequins. and tweeds. Those are the colors that I like to produce in murals. So a harlequin is a dog that has mural patterning on a white background. It's not like a pied where it's got areas of white and areas of mural. It is mural everywhere on a white background. That's a harlequin. A tweed is two different shades on a background. And that background can vary depending on whether it's a fawn mural or a chocolate mural or, or, a, or a blue merle, but you see two, you see basically three colors in this. You see the background color, then you'll see blotches of one color and blotches of another color, kind of like a camo. Love those dogs, very pretty dogs. Um, okay, what else do we say about merles? I think we've about covered merles at that point. I think now we're gonna move on to, uh, I think we've done that one. I think the next one is gonna be fluffies. Thanks for watching. Bye, Corey.